It's human nature to want what you can't have. And for many American car enthusiasts, this notion is all too real. We can all rattle off endless amounts of cherished vehicles that never came stateside. And it always seems that high atop those lists are these five cars and this honorable mention, baby, that never made it on a boat and came over to the land of the free and the brave. So buckle up and get ready to ride shotgun. Let's go. <laughs> Now what most of you guys probably don't know is that I've owned almost every generation of BMW M3. And with the E90 M3, I just always wish that there was a little bit more that it could give me. And the answer to my question would have been this, the GTS, a lighter, more powerful version of the standard M3. And that individual fire orange paint is next level. This literally might be the best car that BMW has ever made. Not only does the S65 get a power bump from 414 horse to 444, but torque rises as well. And what's crazy is how BMW BMW got this extra power. They literally bored that four liter engine to 4.4 liters, which uh, if you ask me is a lot of work for only 30 horsepower gain. But hey, that's how BMW does it. But still, because of the bigger engine bore, the GTS is much louder, rowdier, and faster than its lesser brethren, which means zero to 60 comes in in the high three seconds. <laughs> And did I already mention that color? Because it's the glaring orange from all those Jägermeister racing teams. And believe it or not, it's the only color that you could have ordered of the 150 or so GTSs ever built. Now, my E90 M3 was one of the easiest cars that I've ever driven at the limit. And with a bigger motor, sport bucket seats, and that big wang, this thing looks like even more fun. And it's a huge bummer that they never imported any of these to the good old USA. But why? Essentially, the car doesn't pass any EPA or federal safety standards. And since it lacks airbags, proper seatbelts, and the bumpers are too low, this thing would be a headache to get certified. And we haven't even talked about the engine yet because that 4.4 liter is not homologated, which means they'd either have to put in the lesser four liter engine or spend a ton of money getting it homologated, which doesn't make a lot of sense for any low production car. So the US, never got it officially. With that all being said, what I would do is buy an E92 M3 with the competition package, the ZCP, throw a supercharger on it, an aftermarket wing, a roll bar, and some sport bucket seats, and you literally have your own makeshift GTS. Oh, you got a rapid orange though, Jagermeister orange. And if you wanna learn how to buy that car or any other car using the Ideal Car Strategies where I teach you how to buy cars for free or even make money buying them and using them, check out the Ideal Car Strategies where I teach you how to buy and drive a car Car either for free or even make a little bit of money on it. So let's carry on. This car right here was made famous by Brian O'Connor in the Fast and Furious franchise. But the R34 GTR was a force to be reckoned with ever since it came out in 1999. Not only does this thing have the good looks of a supermodel and probably has the best looking OEM wing ever, pop the hood and you find a twin turbocharged inline six motor with the iconic cherry red valve covers. Now this RB26 DETT closely resembles the engines found in the R32 and the R33, but there was just one big difference. These motors had black valve covers, while on the R34s, Nissan decided to paint the valve covers red. Now the R34 performed just as well as it looked because it was equipped with a sophisticated all-wheel drive system that put the power down to the ground. Now I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of almost every single enthusiast. The R34 GTR is a dream car. And when the first Skylines were introduced in 1969 to race, they never really gained that much attention from the public. But with the introduction of the R32 in 1989, that's when they started to gain some real attention. But the R32, R33, and R34 only came with right-hand drive. So they were never built for the US market, where the R35 was the first GTR to be offered with left-hand drive, and it began eating supercars for lunch in the USA since 2008. But the R35 is just a computer on wheels, where the R34 is the pinnacle of driving experiences. It lacks modern day amenities, but it still has enough computer input to keep you safe and pushing the limit. And because it has the perfect looks and the big screen fame, I think everybody wants one. So why were they banned in the USA? Well, there's really two different versions. 
The first is a tall tale. Legend has it that this thing is just too fast to be on the US roads. When it has a high tech all wheel drive system and an insane motor, police literally just wouldn't be able to keep up with the R34 GTR, which in reality is a bunch of BS. Because the real answer as to why they're not here is actually really simple. The Nissan R34 GTR just can't meet the NHTSA Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. So therefore, it's illegal until the 25 year rule, of course. The Ute, which stands for Coupe Utility, is an Australian icon, kind of like the kangaroo. And the HSV Maloo is the high performance utility that's based off the regular Holden Ute. Specifically, it has full body kits, and when you pop the hood, staring back at you is a high performance V8. And what's super cool is that Maloo means thunder in an Aboriginal language. That's kind of like how Lamborghini used to do all their bulls in Spanish. And for those of you that don't know what a Holden Ute is, here's a little background. Back in the 70s and 80s, car based pickup trucks were actually popular, like this Ford Ranchero or the Chevy El Camino. Mullets were optional. <laughs> and the Ute is just a modern day El Camino, and it is totally badass. In fact, in 2006, the Maloo R8 broke the world's fastest production performance pickup record, going 168 miles per hour and beating the Dodge SRT10 pickup truck, which was one of the fastest sleeper trucks ever built. And that's a great video. Now, pretty much any enthusiast that I've talked to about the Ute would love to own one in the USA, but there's a couple reasons why we never got them here. The first was that the US Australian exchange rate just wasn't that favorable back in 2013. So it really didn't make that much sense to export a Ute to the USA market. And the second thing is that who is realistically gonna pay over $50,000 for this weird looking Corvette powered car truck thingamajig? Yeah, people say that they want one, but realistically, when you have to put your money where your mouth is, they really didn't think that many people were actually gonna pull the trigger and buy one. But hey, I'm triggered. The Mercedes-Benz W201, believe it or not, was the first compact executive car, and the W201 was a success in Europe, but not in the USA, which is a real shame because they were really great cars, and if the market had fared better in the USA, they may have brought some of their really special ones over to the US, like this one, the 190E 2.5-16 Evolution 2, which was fitted with this extremely radical body kit, big for its time Evolution 2 17-inch alloys, and the cherry on top was that humongous adjustable rear wing with the rear window spoiler. This is literally one of the craziest cars that more or less the sensible Germans had ever created. And if you pop the hood, the Evo 2 had the AMG Power Pack fitted to a 2.5 liter inline four, putting out 232 horsepower. Now, because this was a race car, they made 502 of them. And why 502? Because DTM required for homologation, you had to create 500 street legal race cars before you could compete. And this thing is the ultimate four-door track weapon and easily one of the coolest cars that Mercedes has ever built. It's just a real bummer that they never brought them to the good old USA. And now it's time for that honorable mention, baby. The M600 was built for one thing and one thing only, to go fast and take on Ferrari. Or wait, is that two things? Either way, this thing doesn't disappoint. It's a 225 mile per hour rocket ship ready to deliver a performance of a lifetime. And one thing that's gonna surprise you and me is where the engine came from, a Volvo XC90. Yeah, Volvo's SUV. Yeah, but Noble threw a little magic at the 4.4 liter V8. And with the addition of two turbochargers, it pushes out 650 horsepower, which means that zero to 60 comes in a blink of the eye at just three seconds flat. This thing was definitely a handful to drive and you could get all the nannies that you wanted as long as they were all named traction control. Stability control, ABS, and any other safety feature was just too much added weight. And in 2010, Noble actually marketed this thing as the Bugatti Veyron killer. So the interior is less than luxurious with nothing but the bare essentials. But the beautiful thing about this car was that it had a six speed manual transmission. So all four of your limbs got a workout. Can't see my feet. 
but they move in. We all know that shedding weight is one of the easiest ways to make a car faster. And the M600 took this to the extreme. It's an absolutely wild supercar with hyper car performance. It wouldn't pass US safety regulations in a million years. So that's why it was banned from the USA. Which brings us to that time, the ideal question of the day. What is the car, the one car, the one ideal car that you wish they would have imported or they wouldn't have banned in the USA? Let us know, even if you're not from the US, which car do you wish they would have brought over? Let us know down in the comments. Oh, and real quick, let us know on our comments on our Instagram page at ideal.media underscore. You'll see a photo of an R34 GTR and just give us a comment and let us know. I've owned almost every single generation of the M3, and I own two E46 M3s, an O2 convertible with the SMG, which was okay, and an O6 comp package M3, Alpine white, black interior, six-speed manual, which was ideal. But there was one car that was never brought to the USA that was just a little bit better than every other one, and that was this, the CSL, standing for Coupe Sport Lightweight, a car that looks great from any angle. Many of the body parts were replaced by carbon fiber. It's got that iconic single glory hole front bumper. And if you step into the interior, it's stripped down of any miscellaneous accessories. And the S64 motor that came in the regular M3 was already a masterpiece. But they stepped it up with the CSL, putting an extremely beautiful and expensive carbon fiber intake, which produced glorious raspy sounds. One thing about the CSL is that it only came with the SMG transmission, which was great back in the day and was BMW's best transmission. But 20 years later, heck, even when the E90, E92 came out with the DCT, the SMG felt extremely outdated, mainly because the SMG is a single clutch and the DCT is a dual clutch. So it's way faster and just way better. With that said, it was the best transmission of its time and only 1,383 of these CSLs were ever produced and none were shipped to North America. And if you're like me and you love BMW M3s, definitely go check out why Paul Walker owned five of these extremely special M3s or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe, but either way, you can't lose and as always keep living that ideal lifestyle.